Hello and welcome back. In this episode we're going to continue working on the spawning system and we want to make sure they spawn at random positions. So the first thing we want to do is create a few more of these. Control D to duplicate. And I'm going to call spawn enemy twice on the first wave. Like that. And when we spawn the enemy, we don't want to just always spawn at the first position. So let's whoops, let's create a new variable, an int, and then we'll just call this r, and that will be equal to random dot range ah, range and that's expecting a min and a max value the min is inclusive and the max is also inclusive so if we do 0 to 5 we could get 0 1 2 3 4 or 5 we want 0 to um, spawn points dot count I believe minus one so now if there's four things in the list which is zero based we could have we could only have zero one two or three as entries so yeah that that makes sense to me um, that this this will possibly access everything within um, the range of spawn points so now, now we, we just randomly jump into the list, grab one spawn point, and then put an enemy there. And we should be doing that twice in wave one. So let's verify that that works. Alright, so we only ended up with one enemy, so something's wrong. And it looks like he's frozen in place. So pause the scene. Alright, and it looks like they actually created two and they're in the exact same position. So something's wrong here. And that could have just happened by random chance. So let's go ahead and print R to the screen. Play. Same thing happened again. Oh wait, that, that time we gave two and three. And that time I gave 1 and 3. But for some reason they're always spawning here. That's frustrating. Oh, actually, um, that obviously we're not... Um, we're, we're only accessing the 0th element still, so we need to make sure we copy R into this. Alright, so now let's try this one more time. And that time we we had two zeros. So let's try one more time. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, it only took like five tries, but um, just by random chance, we ended up in two different spots. So th the random number generation is working. Now we we want to make sure that we don't hit the same spawn point twice. So let's create a method in spawn point void check clear now if if there's an enemy on this spawn point or if we just spawn something we we want to return a value of false so this will be a public it'll return a boolean value either true or false by default let's just return true and wave manager it's going to find the spawn point and then we're going to check if that spawn point is clear. If sp dot check clear. If it is clear, um, instantiate the game object. And if it's not, 
um, while Well, we could make this a little bit cleaner. Um, we can say while... Okay, so SP... Yeah, I'll, I'll just do it like this. While SP.checkClear equals false. And then just try everything again. And I don't like the duplicate code, so I'm just going to delete this part. And... Yeah, that should work. So... Or maybe not. Well, no, that's not going to work. So... Spawn point, da-da-da-da-da. Random range. Okay, actually, I was going to try to eliminate duplicate code, but now let, let's just keep it like this. So grab a random number, find the spawn point at that index in this array. If it's clear, spawn the enemy there. If it's not clear, run through this loop over and over again until we find something that is clear. So grab another random number, grab that spawn point, check if it's clear. If it is, create the create the game object. If it's not, you we're just gonna keep doing this loop until we find something that is um, I think that'll work. It's it's not the best written code, but I think it'll serve our purpose. And now we d we just need to make sure in spawn point we need something here. So let's just create a timer. So public float cooldown and public float interval. And just make these a little bit more explicit. Spawn interval and cooldown is fine. So spawn interval by default will be 1. So check clear. Um, whenever we check if this is clear, we're just going to set the cooldown to time dot time plus spawn interval. Whoops, I don't know why I did that. Sorry about that. So, set the cooldown, and if we have already cooled down, if time.time .time is greater than cooldown, that means we haven't spawned anything in a while, just return true. And then we set the cooldown. So in a nutshell, cooldown starts out at zero, and so time.time .time is going to be greater than that. So the first time we check this, it'll return true, and then we'll set cooldown to a time that's a little bit in the future. Current time plus a little bit equals something in the future. And then once we pass that, we are clear to spawn again. So... Oh yeah, and also in within that... Um, if, if we're not clear to spawn, we just need to make sure we return false. Like that. So that should eliminate um, the whole duplicate spawning thing. Alright, so it worked once. Let's, let's try it a few more times. It worked again. And you'll notice that they're in different spots now. Different spots again. One more time. Okay. Now, for some reason, this guy got stuck in the floor. That's not cool. So, I'm going to pause it and just look at his position. So, he's at a position of 1. Looks like his feet are on the floor. Um, he could be stuck in the ground. I'm just going to drag him up a tiny bit and see what happens. Is 
resume. Still stuck. Now what is this circle? Is that the capsule collider? I think that might have been his capsule collider. I don't know why it was stuck in the ground like that, because it's supposed to be up here like this. Resume. He's still frozen in the ground. He has a reference to his nav mesh agent. I don't know what the, what the problem is here. Let's just drag him up one more time. And you'll notice he, he instantly jumped back to the ground, and that's because he is correctly um, locking to the nav mesh. Let's go ahead and open up the navigation tab. Huh. Oh, <laughs> problem solved. In a previous video, I had mapped the nav mesh onto these rocks. Um, I, I'm actually really relieved that that's the problem. So we just need to rebake the nav mesh, which we can't do that in play mode. Um, but but he thinks that there's a rock right here and that the nav the nav mesh has been carved out. So that's why he can't walk across that terrain. So there there is actually nothing wrong with Axon, as far as I can tell. Um, so that's great. That means I can cut the video off here. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.